Hello. Welcome. We're back. We're back. I'm Josh. I'm Jeremy. This is Phantom Power Hour. And I'm getting a phone call <laughs> from New York. New York. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Leave a voicemail. The state of New York or the city of New York? State. The whole state? It said Isla. We're waiting for a voicemail. Have you seen this? Yes, I love it. That's wild. Wait, didn't you answer the phone when I left you a voicemail? Mm-hmm. Technology's yeah. crazy. We're, we're talking about uh, the iOS update where if somebody is leaving you a voicemail, it will turn it into words on the screen as they're yeah. talking. Oh, it's gone. No, oh, no. I'm not worth a voicemail. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's like everything that I could dream of. The, is, you, you screen your phone calls. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. That's why I don't answer when you call. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, there is so much of our generation that uh, has hopped on to the whole don't call me, text me train, right? Mm-hmm. Do you think some of that was born out of like your kid in the 90s and the parents say like, let it go to voicemail so we can see who's calling? Did you, so did your household do that? do that? No. No? We never did that. My family did. <laughs> I don't know. If, that makes sense. Yeah. No, but I, I mean, I text a fair amount, but I would always rather get on the phone. Like, yeah. I mean, we had a conversation about a conversation that I had with someone who. This is true. Was seemingly highly misinterpreted and just get, try to get the person on the phone. Like, yeah, I'm it just, I don't know. That That's is, why I don't like texting. That's, that is a, <laughs> that is a problem. I, I wonder. I feel like emojis can be used to sort of uh, show intent for a text, because if not, then it's just however that person interprets the words, right? And that's a dangerous game to play. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we need to have like an extra layer of emoji or something like if you're (laughs) if if you want if you want your intent to be like (laughs) playful, then maybe the bubble shows up in a different shade of blue. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) <laughs> Come on, Apple, let's help people out here. This is where I really start to feel like old man. And I'm not really on that kind of old man argument side on much things. Mm-hmm. But it's like, man, I really don't. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> just give me like, a call. Just, yeah, just call me. Like, yeah. I don't want to have to explain like, no, I'm not being rude. I'm just giving you the information you asked for in yeah. this moment. I'm not tied up emotionally in this whatsoever. Are you? I apologize. <laughs> you. I feel like you are pretty good, though, with uh, the voice memos. <laughs> They're way too long. No, but they, they, they get the idea across, though. So, yeah. I, I know I do this. And I, I try. I have a number in my head. Like, if I get to a minute 20, I'm like, this. yeah, this is too long. So I wrap it up way too quick, and then I forget to say what I even originally wanted to say. Yeah. But voice memos are fun. Not quite a text, not quite a phone call. Somewhere in the middle. But you can still hear my sweet, sweet voice. Mm. And that's what that's why I'm here, to hear your sweet, sweet voice. And that's why you're here, to hear his sweet, sweet voice. How do our voices sound? What if we get what if we get real close? If we get closer, do they change? Does it? Does it change over here? What about back here? Ooh. Ooh. Maybe who's coming on that front? Possibly. Maybe. We've got some different microphones. I think that's all we're gonna really say about that's it. That's all we're gonna say. And we'll find out when I'm editing this video. Uh, how they sound? Hopefully, great. I want to. I want to know what. Like, text me when you do this because I'm curious. Because I've I can send edited, you a clip. I've edited a couple podcasts with these mm-hmm. with, with somebody else, and they were great. Yeah, and they're cheap. Really? We're not, we're not going to talk about it yet. Oh, but affordable. They might say. Yeah. Cheap could be misinterpreted, Jeremy. Yeah. Off camera, they're. Okay. Taking up camera time. We're not talking about anything. <laughs> We're talking about things, just nothing that we can't talk about. You didn't hear any of that. None of it. Apologies. Of it. That was probably the cool logo. Yeah, you probably saw a cool little logo with light bars with some some smooth music underneath it. By the way, I see you're editing on some of these. Like, I'm getting clever. There's jokes. Yeah, yeah. Did you catch the family guy in the yeah. last... <laughs> <laughs> just Peter Griffin just sneaking in there. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> They're fun. They're fun. But I don't I don't know how much longer I want to have a you know have to do any editing. 
Oh the, yeah. It's a it's a brave new world of AI. Okay. And, and I see the transition you're getting into. Yeah. But let me ask you guys a question mm-hmm. first. This is just genuine curiosity because on my on my channel the videos have to be like super short and tight. Podcast, do you guys do you like it looser? Like the silence in between sentences is that okay? Like for example, Did that bother you? Uh. <laughs> or would you want it like, for example, did that bother you? Like, <laughs> how or, tight should we be editing? Yeah. This is what I'm asking. <laughs> I think I think what he's getting at is, do you want just like jump cuts to where there's no break between sentences, cutting out the ums and the uhs and the different ideas? Or is it is it more relaxing to have like just a casual conversation where sometimes my brain doesn't work and I have to figure out what I'm going to say? I like the relaxed vibe. I dig that. But maybe you don't. Let us know. You know what can't relax? What's that? AI. Ooh, <laughs> double segue. <laughs> <laughs> I could do this too. You know what can't relax? This message from our sponsor. Oh, oh we don't oh, have one. We should put a sponsor. I could make one. Okay. Later. Just going to create a sponsor? Yeah, we'll drop it in. Pew, pew, edit it. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I know... We've talked about AI things uh, a few times in the past, and I understand that it's it's in the zeitgeist. It's all over the place. Everybody from you know your your talk show radio stuff and your neighbor when he's taking out the trash is commenting on AI these days. Oh yeah, Carl, you know how it is when he takes out the trash. Always talking about AI, AI this, AI that, throwing the trash away. We haven't heard from Carl in a while. We did actually, yeah, oh, yeah. We uh, did? Last the last one. Yeah. Oh, I must have watched it before he got in there. Sorry, mm-hmm. Carl. It's all good. Catch Appreciate you, Carl. Um, but there have been some uh, some developments musically and otherwise. And before we hop into the musical developments, there's one that is so cool and terrifying that I kind of wanted you to check it out. And if you haven't seen it yet, it's very much worth checking out. And I'll probably throw some. Uh, screen grabs on the screen when we go through, but should I start a screen grab? Yeah, go ahead and start that grab. You close all my reverb tabs. <laughs> <laughs> what you shopping for? Oh, your boy bought some pedals. Oh, no way, dude! I got a whole. Pedal we can go through going. that maybe on the next one, but oh. I am excited to hear about it. I need actually some suggestions. Like it's it's on a test board right now, and it's a mess. Mm-hmm. Like I need quality cables. I need an actual functioning board, mm-hmm. and. I feel like there's one or two pieces that I'm still missing, but yeah. I'm excited about it. I'm maybe maybe we go through it. Oh, we can. I'm totally down. You but, got one? Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> there's a couple of things I'm not super happy with, but that's another We'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Stay okay, tuned next week. Okay, get out of here. Don't show that yet. So where am I going? You are going to go to Sora. I don't remember if it's Sora.com or just Sora, but give it a good Google. Is it open AI? Uh, I believe it's a branch of OpenAI, yeah. Huh. So while Jeremy's pulling it up, Sora is a video-based AI up to, up to, up to, that up. can create these insane clips based on just some word prompts. So think, if you're familiar with Midjourney or Dolly, um, these image-based AI systems, same idea, same concept, but now in video form. And... Some of these videos are just insane. Insane to think that none of it is real. It's all generated. Wait, is this generated? I'm pretty that sure. That has to be generated. Everything on the site. Yeah. Scroll down a little bit. Whoa. This one. That is looks like wild. AI. That looks great, but that looks like AI. There are some things in there that are, are some giveaways. Yeah. But remember, this is Gen 1. This is 1.0 just released oh my god uh, you can scroll to the right for other ones i love this one oh. some woolly mammoths just like is having this a good old time 4K? in the snow yeah super high fidelity ultra realistic no way yeah the imperfections in the skin and everything they've got camera shake um just like even like human movements look pretty normal how would it it's doing like imperfections and things. 
Like, how do you how do you train an AI? I mean, this is my ignorance coming out, but how do you train an AI to be like these things that don't matter? Like his little eyelashes on the side. Right. Like what? what? If if it's trained off of images and videos of real people, it's going to pick up on all those little things. I wonder where it learned that astronauts wear knit hats. That was the prompt. It'll, so underneath it, it'll show you what the prompt is for Stop it. Stop it. A movie featuring adventure of a 30-year-old spaceman wearing a red wool knit. <laughs> Isn't that insane? And Shot on 35 millimeter film? Wow. Okay. And the prompts aren't outrageously complex. The way that when Midjourney first launched or Dolly first launched, you had to be really specific. Yeah. But. Yeah. Well, and I, I subscribe to like all of them, but mm -hmm. I recently stopped Mid Journey, which I know Mid Journey is awesome, but Chad GPT does so well mm -hmm. with it. And you can continue iterations from past yes. ones. And like it was doing what I needed it to do. I, I, we, we know by now, if you are a frequent watcher, that Jeremy is a, a Mac user yeah I, I live in a windows ecosystem so it's cool to get two different perspectives yeah. but windows 11 now has uh for better or for worse being implemented into the operating system but part of that is i believe they call it copilot but it's a chat gpt driven system working inside of your os that also mm -hmm. has dolly just as an offshoot widget in there so <laughs> i can just click a <laughs> click a button to open up this sidebar to that actually would be kind of cool because if if no you, subscription required. All right. I mean, if you could teach it to do tasks for you, can you do that? Uh, there, I think that's part of the roadmap. Right now, um, I think for security reasons, it's not allowed to actually interface with your system. That would be. But in the future, there will be like scheduling programs that you can run. So like. Um, this is maybe a more nefarious side of it, but let's say you have a work from home job and you yeah. need to log in by eight, but you're like <laughs> going to be busy brushing your teeth or whatever. You could have it <laughs> auto start at like 750, that kind of stuff. I mean, is it nefarious though? Because you're using tools. Like I could see it being nefarious if you're actually sleeping until 10 o'clock. And you just have your computer set to auto start and auto log in hey, and maybe move the mouse. If you're getting results, then what is the actual job? Like who does the job best or who can train their AI to be their replacement? You're just utilizing a tool. That, that would be crazy if you could train it to just do If you're the hiring job. a construction crew and somebody's got like tools that are breaking and somebody walks in with awesome tools, who's going to build the house faster? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, well, yeah, it's not yeah. the tools, but it, I just, you know... <laughs> We're just playing devil's advocate here. Yeah, yeah. But so scroll back. This uh, is bonkers, though. Yeah, this one's beautiful. Like a drone shot. And not only the landscape looks great, but like the water, the water. simulation. Water is always the giveaway. This you can see the different depths. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the way yeah. it's breaking. The foam's in the right place. The caustics look real. The way the light's traveling through the water, um, darker in when it's deeper and lighter when it's not as deep, when it's oh more shallow. Gosh. The only thing that's weird is like up here. Yeah, it looks more of a static image up like out of out of kind of the center frame. But like even this random stuff in the background, like that's what makes it believable. How yeah. did it know to do that? It just it it's getting smarter than us, Jeremy. That's that's what it boils down to. Scroll back to the first one real quick. Like if this was a Turing test, I failed. Because I know that you mentioned like there are some dead giveaways, but here's yeah. what blows my mind. All AI generated, the reflections are so good. They are really good. Not only like the mirror-like qualities of the puddles and it, it's like the light bouncing and um, doing surface illumination where the light's not actually hitting. The reflections in these glasses. The imperfections in her skin. Mm -hmm. You know what? Uh, the I physics think, of the earrings. If you told if you had told me like, oh, this is just a promo shot for the new like Sony FX forty four or something. I don't yeah. know. I'd be like, okay, that yeah, this is a really good shot. Even the clothing, how it has like it, it feels so realistic. It does. Nothing about it is too like this stiff. person floating in the background here. Yeah. That looks weird. Yeah. That's a giveaway. Yeah. It, and the whole crowd, like most of them have like the same stride. Yeah. Yeah. So there are some some giveaway things. Like geese are having like Mortal Kombat out here. What is going on? 
there's actually somebody in the building. Let me see what this is. You know, there's a AI 3D creation now where you can prompt for 3D models. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. They're not great yet. I'm not great at 3D models. <laughs> so if I could tell it, hey, I need a sh new shock mount for this microphone. I'd be interested if it can get like measurements right. Maybe if you fed in specific measurements and if you know like the thread type and stuff, potentially. That'd be cool. But also, um, if you need certain things, you can send me measurements and I can make something for you. CAD work like that is pretty quick and, and straightforward for me. Yeah, these animated versions, like the non-realism ones, I think is where it's going to really shine. Because, like, okay, all of this AI talk for every industry is unfortunate for the artists that have put in, like, huge amounts of time to master their craft. Yeah. I don't, just in the way of music and, and paintings and drawings, I don't think we're going to lose the human effort of creativity. But I think that there is going to be a lot of room for smaller studios, smaller, even individuals creating short films, animated series, things like that, that could be really uh, using a lot of creativity, even if they, that individual doesn't have the specific skill set to explore that. Sorry, you're, you're saying good things and I'm over here just reacting. <laughs> That's okay. Oh my gosh. Pirates in your coffee. Pirates in your coffee, yeah. Coffee pirates. It's not perfect, but that's shocking. Yeah. <laughs> like it's it doesn't have to be perfect to be like a clip for an advertisement. No. You remember when, I remember when the Nintendo 64 came out and we were like, oh my gosh, it looks real. Yeah. It doesn't. It never did. What are we going to think about this? <laughs> I genuinely, I think that we might live in the era where we see something like the Matrix come into a reality. As, Ooh, as good or bad as it is. That's dark. That's a bold statement. I think so. And I'm not saying that we're going to be growing humans in pods to power machines or anything. Who knows? Maybe. That's literally know. what you're saying. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just saying. Let that, me put words in. <laughs> that <laughs> what we have now is virtual reality will become alternate reality. For better or for worse, there are going to be huge amounts of pitfalls. And I think that there's going to be a group of people where it could be a saving grace of some kind. Like... Um, you know, potentially people that are are bedridden in some kind of way, or um, you know, there there are so many different medical based implementations. I think that this could be a really altruistic thing for those individuals. Of course, it can destroy society or something. I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. Hopefully, it's cool and everybody enjoys the creativity of it. But I actually did see this clip. The young man in his 20s. I thought the clouds were AI when I saw the clip, when they were talking about it. I was like, okay, big whoop. But I didn't realize the whole thing. Was AI. Yeah. So, like, I mean, if that was a Turing test, it some passed. Of it, some of it to me is kind of giving it away. Um, I mean, if you really look, yeah. Mouthing words and, like, not all the muscle movements in the neck feel realistic. When he does big head movements, yeah. they look a little bit better. But the micro movements aren't quite there, which is totally understandable. His right hand holding the book feels a little bit it's awkward. Weird, yeah. But at the same time, if you put some BS out on Facebook, who's going to pay attention to those little things? Zero percent. Exactly. You can have especially anybody, on a smaller screen. Anybody say anything you want, mm -hmm. like that's wild. Yeah. Hold on to your butts. These ones are cool. These like historic renditions of generative ai the only thing weird about this is that i'm in a drone shot in like the 1860s <laughs> exactly <laughs> didn't you know they had <laughs> drones back then <laughs> whoa so here's potentially a very cool application could you imagine sitting in history class and instead of you know rewriting notes from a, a 
a board or something, you instead put on these goggles and you got to fly around and see these historic sites or watch the um, like Lincoln's address or something like that. That'd be wild. Wouldn't it be a crazy cool learning experience? That would be cool. Crazy cool to us. You know, if something like that does become reality for students these days, that's going to be the only reality they know. So all the cool stuff that we feel about it might just feel pedantic and average for for the, the younger generations. But This feels like a Nine Inch Nails video right here. Oh, I see that. <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening, but this is weird. Step printing scene of person running. So it's like, it doesn't quite know how a treadmill works. It is backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and but the I movement mean, and... be honest, his form is trash. His form is trash. <laughs> <laughs> We're not run shaming. Oh. Oh. Whoa. 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 That one's messed up. Yeah, that was that was a little glitchy for sure. Still, very cool. Very wild first version of this, uh, you know, video huh. AI technology that I think, I don't think I could even begin to imagine all the implementations that it's going to like evolve into. I tend to be an optimist. So mm -hmm. I'm like, ooh, this is fun. These are cool toys to play with. Exactly. But I did recently use this. because I, I like ChatGPT a lot. I wanted to see if I could feed it every piece of equipment that I have and like for an upcoming session of which you're a session player on. Yeah. It's like, all right, here's the players. Here's the session. Here's the general sound we're going for. General Build me sound. an input list. Build me an input list. And it did. Should we go through it? Let's go through it. Yeah. <laughs> see what that, see what chat GPT came up with. Can I make that? So, more? so just so I have clarification, you already supplied it with all of your available gear. I did. I okay. I started out asking a question because I didn't know if it would do this. Mm -hmm. uh, can you create an input list for a band recording? A lot of misspellings because I'm typing fast. Like, if I gave you all my microphones, preamps, compressors, can you pick certain pieces based on what the band wants to sound like and the tonal properties of gear I have? Yeah, here's what I need. Your equipment, the band setup, desired sound, and what recording environment. So I was like, all right, let me describe the recording environment. we got a control room, live room, two ISO booths. Gave it way too much information. But here are the microphones. And I just listed every microphone that I have. I wow. listed all the outboard <laughs> gear that I have. And I was like, I want it to be like clean, classy. We have hired session players, drummer, keys, bass, Clean, classy, reminiscent of like older classic country. Some of the ideas it gave me were weird and ideas that I never would have thought. And I'm like, I wonder, should I? Are we going to try some of these <laughs> I ideas? I don't know. So it went through a couple iterations because it kept using stuff in different places because it was favoring gear, which was really interesting. I don't know. I mean, I kind of understand. It wanted to use 1073s everywhere, but I only have two. And we're doing a full session, so I can't reuse those over and over again because everything's happening all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I told it that, and I was like, hey, here's one of my favorite mics. Why, is, why isn't the loud need and being used anymore? It's like, oh, I'm really sorry. Here's where you can use it. <laughs> and it kept spitting it out in like a list form and giving me weird explanations. I was like, just give me a table. So... Give me an input list. And then it had notes like for attack and clarity. Like, okay, whatever. It's like change the notes to also include like the miking techniques. I want to see what it'll do. Yeah. And I haven't read through this stuff yet. But I was like, also, my D112 does not function. So we can't use that. And then I only have two 1073s. Keep in mind, like, I can only use one thing at a time. So limit yourself there. So then it came up with this. And I haven't really looked through it yet. But I wanted to see what it came up with a session for. Yeah, let's run through this. And um, I'd love to hear, like, why you would or wouldn't agree with kind of what it's saying, mic choice-wise and all those kind of – because you have so much hands-on experience with these different mics. You know the intricacies of, of most or all of them. Mm -hmm. But so, I also have my tendencies. Right, yeah. And I get in habits and – 
So something like this is like, well, I, maybe this will get me some different ideas and it never hurts to try stuff. Well, 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 are we going to have time on that session to do the two, two takes, do the chat GPT take and then no. the jammy take? Dang no. it. <laughs> we, we need to do that at some point. But though. I mean, if depending on chat GPT does, I don't see a reason not to just do this. Yeah. Like, because some of the things are pretty spot on. So one weird thing was it only gave me a kick out. When I told it the D112 didn't work, it was like, okay, I don't want to get a kick in. I don't want to kick in. We're going to use one. Uh, but it wants to want me to use the D6 on in a Focusrite 828. And I told it because I wanted like classic country, like clean, maybe if it wants like a pillowy sound. And that's kind of an interesting thought because you can definitely get a well-rounded sound out of a D6. I don't yeah. know if I would want it for this session, but interesting. Aim towards where the beater hits. That's totally valid. <laughs> Snare top SM57 into the That's cap sick. EVP28. Two to three inches above the rim, angled towards the center. That's spot on. Yeah. The VP28, that's most of the time what I would use if I'm not going into a 1073. So that tells me I picked something later. The Using the 57 above like the snare mic, that's just, it's going for like old school. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a classic move, right? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Sure, beta 57 on the bottom. Yep. Pretty straight up. And it's using uh, my claret. So it's like, hey, it's snare bottom. Who cares? Like, <laughs> 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 I was like, okay, you're kind of smart. Using 421s on toms. That's very typical for class. Like, mm. And again, 828s, keeping it as clean as possible. The overheads, it wants to use the SM81s, and I don't... It's an interesting choice. Yeah, I mean, it's not a wrong choice, but given the rest of the options in yeah. the gear, that's a weird one for me. Do you think that... So it's pulling its information, right, just from the web, forum-based yeah. research, all this other kind of API scraping stuff that it's doing. Do you think it's because there's just not as much user base... Uh, like forum based conversation about Loughton, Lewitt, um, all the other plethora of mics that you it have. It could be, but there was one, like, vo I wonder if it still did it on lead vocal here. Yeah, it wants oh. to use the MA300 on lead vocal. Interesting. Which is a fantastic mic. But in my collection, maybe it's not the strongest choice for this. But I, I'm, I'm interested. Like, I know I we're jumping around. Up. Are there qualities about that that would make it fit into the description that you gave? I think because, like, it's saying, hey, let's put it 6 to 12 inches from the singer slightly above the mouth. That's spot on. And it even gave, like, a manly ELOP for the compression on that. So mm -hmm. it's like, hey, it's going for, like, this classic country thing where you would have used, like, a – like an LA two A, yeah, on the vocal, and I don't have one, so it's like hmm, How that can circuit's we pretty close. That? Yeah, <laughs> it's like man, that's this is interesting. Cool. This is very cool. It is, yeah. I mean, it keeps. I told it I don't have KM eighty fours. Like it spit that on on one of my first lists for the pianos, pianos and keys. Like it wants to use the upright and put. KM 184s on. I told it I don't have any, but it's like, well, if you have them, it's like it really, if you, it really, it really wants you to have them. It really them. wants you to have the next prompt will just say, go buy some. <laughs> but it knew to put the red DI on base. Yeah. Like, I mean, who doesn't know to put the red DI on base? Come GPT on. does. A so use 017 2 black brass for the acoustic. Sure. That's a great option. R88 for rooms. Yeah. It's currently set up right there for room for the last session. Yeah. I mean, some of these things seem really obvious, but this is a computer. <laughs> yeah. It has no experience or context, really, other than what it's uh, it's it's getting from the yeah. masses online. But, I mean, we could change this, too. But I was adjusted and switched the D6. I switched to a D6 because of the D12 issue, known for a tight, punchy click sound. Yeah, sure. Utilize the Sure Beta 57 to avoid using 257s to give a different texture. Okay. Very valid. It put the C414 on hi-hat for its versatility and ability to capture the crispness of the hi-hats. That's. I've never used a 414 on hi-hat, but now I'm like, I wonder. Yeah, now we got to try it. I kind of want to. 
Uh, adjusted to chair all equipment is used for wide stereo image of overheads and pianos. Okay. Yeah. What does it say for the electric guitar there? Suggested a suggested Royer 121 as an example, assuming you have one, which I told it I don't. Or a similar quality dynamic rated yeah. mic, since it wasn't listed. But, I mean, where did it actually put that? Yeah, Royer 121 into a Kepi VB28, eight inches from the cone, slightly off center. I mean, that's not bad recommendations. Yeah. All right. And I mean, a 121 on a country session. You would see that just about anywhere. I'd be interested to see <laughs> if you threw something else at it completely different stylistically. Okay. Like if you were to telling it that you were trying to do a metalcore album with all of your equipment or something. Like All right, let's go. How how versatile and accurate will it be in terms of uh mic choicing and placement and stuff? Or is it just here's what most people do, like most people use a fifty seven on snare and like all the tutorials that I read through say to, you know, put it a few inches above the snare and angle it towards the center, you know? I always say please to, uh, Me too. to just make my... <laughs> Try to stay good with the AI overlords. <laughs> so I basically said, scratch that. This is now a metal course session. <laughs> 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 Kick in, D6, yep. Snare top, 57, so we're on the same train so far. It's putting the distressor on snare top. Did it do that before? I don't believe so. No. Mm -mm. You must know that you like the distressor. That's a nice move. <laughs> Trying to so make it doing aggressive. This, it's doing the same setup, the exact same setup, except now it wants D6 on kick in. But 81's on top, 414, 88, like... Move to 57 to the guitar as opposed to ribbon. Okay, well, there's some evidence that it's, like, actually taking into account the stylistic choicings. The the 57 and 421. Like yeah. Class, that, that was all over, like, metal forums. Red DI, EV, RE20 for bass amp. That's not a bad Lead option. vocals changed. SO7B. <laughs> Wait, yeah. that's in 73. Yeah. With a manly ELOP on that one. That's I mean, that's not a bad choice. I just don't do it very often. Put the NT1 on the keys. Interesting. For wide stereo imaging. Room for piano, allow an LT308. That will not work. Those things, well, I don't know, actually. I don't know how far you can get a 308 from the source. I know it'll reject basically anything on the peripherals, but mm -hmm. I don't know if you could use that as a room mic. Maybe if you compress the snot out of it. I Maybe. Mean, what scroll back up, see what, what it says for the reasoning. The band's overall oh, that doesn't really give you yeah. a good idea. Position capture the overall band's energy and ambiance. No. The D6 is proficiency in handling fast, punchy sounds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. SM57 for its punch. I would change that out to snare mic because it also rejects a little better. Mm -hmm. 421. I probably wouldn't use those for metalcore. Definitely wouldn't use 81s on top. I would want something cleaner or crispier up on top. Maybe the 81s are the move. I haven't used them in so long. Yeah. I, don't know. I use them for like snare bottom and hi hat. Like I like them there. I don't know. See, again, I'm in my own like You're stuck habits. in your ways. Yeah. Maybe this is better. I don't know. AI says so. It really wants me to use D6 on kick though. The NT1 for the keys is still interesting to me, but I mean, those are. I have so many things like I never set up and I have my favorites and I want to use my favorites all over the place. So, but maybe there's some new favorites hiding maybe, over there, just maybe crying every time you reach past them for another mic. I just need to mic. like set stuff up and always have it set up. I get so it. What you need I to get do? it. We just need to do it. And when I mean when you're working in this environment, you don't have as much wiggle room for creatively trying things out if you're on a deadline or you have a yeah a paid session that has a, a tight schedule. Yeah, and as, as, if you, in those moments, you tend to lean towards the stuff you know works. And you know how to work with. Yeah. Yeah. As if if those overheads sounded weird and I was using the 81s, I'm not really sure I would know how to adjust them, how mm -hmm. they operate in space. Yeah. Well, we're not in space. We're on Earth. 
<laughs> I don't know. We plug it into Sora. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Put him into space. <laughs> I wonder, man. But like, I'm, it definitely stayed away from like large diaphragm condensers, which probably the right move on a metal core session. Yeah. Interesting stuff. That's very cool. I mean, it, it's definitely an implementation of Chat GPT that I'd never considered before. I hadn't until this morning. Yeah. And I could see this being really useful for especially like people in the beginning, like they're new to this or maybe they're students or something and yeah. they're trying to, you know, figure out how to explore new sounds or maybe they could ask a more detailed description on placement for mics or yeah. more detailed description of why are you picking this uh, this specific preamp for the Tom 2, you know? Like. <sighs> If I had this in college in the studios where I was like just putting mics up to like I didn't know what anything sounded like. I had no frame of reference for anything. This would have been super helpful. Like and I could have gotten this same information asking my professor. Yeah. But you don't always have access like That's that. True. Like sometimes you just gotta get stuff done. If this was available. Yeah. Yeah. I can see it. Being a double-edged sword at the same time, because part of the magic of creating your own voice and learning is the kinesthetic part of putting up a mic, looking at how you set it up, and listening, and then switching switching it up. Yeah, you know. And I can see there might be a select group of people that get a list like this and they just run with it, mm -hmm. and they don't experience the creativity or the trial and error side as much, therefore missing out on huge opportunities to learn and overcome hurdles. And the, I guess the other side of this too, like this will get you to sound like what it thinks this thing sounds like. So that means like it's going to fit right in with everything else. So if you want like your own sonic identity, this wouldn't be a way to go about it. Yeah, It's like the we're talking metalcore, like if we weren't mic and amps, like I'm surprised it didn't just say, "Hey, use a DI in this amp sim." But I didn't give it that prompt. I was like, "What mic?" You didn't tell it that you had the amp sim. That's a good point. But like, it's kind of that same argument. Like, so many bands sound the same because we're all using the same thing. But it's this going through forums and picking stuff that has already existed in content somewhere. Yeah. So this isn't really gonna be different. Now, what what would be interesting is like, hey. Give me interesting, unique ideas. I wonder, let's yeah. try it. Yeah. Go back to the country session. <laughs> <laughs> Give me unique miking ideas that are a bit out of the box, but will sound dope. <laughs> <laughs> You just got to talk to him. Oh, no, you never ready. said please. Oh, no. Uh, but I'm speaking colloquially. Yeah, mm -hmm, it's true. Like we're buddies. Mm -hmm. Tape emulation. Oh, uh, I wanted miking. It's giving me techniques. Mixing. Oh, it changed miking to mixing. Uh. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> That's on me. Of course, you can't copy, can you? There we go. Give me another input list with unique miking ideas. Is it done typing? It doesn't like me to start talking again until it's done. Yeah, do not interrupt. It's on a roll. <laughs> Oh, you're really going into... See, I didn't even know I was going to get mixing tips here. You're getting a whole course load. Experiment with room mics. Technique. All Why right. it's cool. You go. That's pretty cool. Parallel distortion on bass. Yes, mm -hmm. that's a solid technique we use almost every time. Mm -hmm. Banjo harmonica or banjo through a Leslie? Bro, I got a new Leslie speaker. No, right? you didn't? Yes, I did. Oh, <laughs> we're about to Leslie everything. How did it know? <laughs> Why it's cool. Swirling texture adds. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I never would have thought to put harmonica through it, though. That's interesting. Now we have to try it. I have to. Creative panning. <laughs> <laughs> Stereo widening. All right. Sidechain. Okay. Let's go to the input list. 
For a country session that experiments with unconventional mic techniques to capture unique and captivating sounds, consider the following. These techniques aim to inject freshness <laughs> to the recording <laughs> Straight to process. the vein. Freshness to the vein. That was a clean pop. That was a nice pop. <laughs> those, I liked it. Those veins are crispy. I'm going to clip that and make that the new subscribe oh, sound. Oh, buddy. The, the kick out. Loughton Eden. Whew. No, wait. It's saying the... It's saying 308. The Eden 308. Does it want the Eden or the 308? Those are very different mics. <laughs> I mean, the 308 might work. Capture boominess and ambience. Okay. And use a blanket tunnel. Snare top 57 with an 013 FET. That could actually really work. Dual mic these. I mean, that's that's very much like the, the KM84 tape to the 57 thing mm -hmm. that they used to do all the time. And st people still do it. Blend of attack and ring. Under, interesting. Underneath, aim at this. Oh, this. Okay. Dual mic the top snare. One mic angled toward the center and the other at the rim for a blend of attack and ring. That's actually, hmm. Beta 57 underneath place. Place a piece of paper on the snare head for added sizzle. I've never tried that. Hold on. I'm trying to understand. Uh, place a piece of paper underneath on, the snare wires. It says on the snare head under the mic. The snare head under the mic. I think this is talking snare bottom. So I imagine what it's saying, like between the snare wires. And yeah, that's what I would imagine. But the the way it unless looks it wants it, like a BFSD. That's see, that's where I was going. Like, is it saying you're putting it on top to get a different sound? But clarify snare bottom. Do you want paper on top head or bottom? Go. <laughs> the intention was to place a piece of paper on the top head, not the bottom. Yeah, so it wants like a BFSD. Yeah. It wants a BFSD. Everyone wants a BFSD. Everyone wants Even Chad GPT. All right. Fiddle CV4. That's a fantastic choice. Suspend the mic above the fiddle, capturing the bowing. Yep. Yeah. Vocal duet 0172 Black Brass. That's a 1073 into an ELOP. It wants an R88 for the room. Go figure. <laughs> into the Cush Audio Fatso. Yep. Okay. Yeah. To like compress the room. Bass gets red DI again. What, what, what's, where's the creative part? But consider reamping for additional character. Why don't I get a creative prompt? Because it knows I have two ISO booths. It's using those for guitars. Yeah, but like. And the Leslie. We could do something, you know? No. Put me through a guitar amp or. Or make me put paper on my strings. <laughs> you get the short end of the stick. Yeah, and I know. Always. <laughs> <laughs> but bass is like the one thing we know we're going to use DI every time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I might take one on guitar, but it's there for emergencies. Mm -hmm. Like bass, I'm going to use the DI. This is true. I will also reamp it. Then it's just easier to reamp you later because <laughs> you're so loud. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I put the bass cab... In an ISO booth, it's going to rattle everything in here. Well, like, and like version, I don't know what version of the studio you're in now, but like I'm just going to say 1.4. We used to have the, the bass amp in a room back that way. Yeah. And it would still rumble through. I had it in, a, in the, in when I had like the ISO booths back here mm -hmm. or the ISO cabs, something. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. I forgot about that. It was mm -hmm. a long time ago. Acoustic guitar, Soyuz 017, and an NT1. Talk about a discrepancy in price. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that might totally work, but... Be unique. That's crazy. XY configuration with those, it said, right? I wouldn't do that. That would be a bad idea. Have you tried it? No. Well, there you go. How do you know? It's going to be lopsided. Yeah, that's going to be weird. Maybe that's where the uniqueness comes from. Maybe, okay, sure. <laughs> I told it to be unique. <laughs> Pedal your... steel, 81 times 2. That's not a bad idea. Banjo, LA220, stereo. Everything is stereo. Piano, C414, pair. Yep. 
Okay. Mandolin, 440 pure. Interesting. So ChatGPT hears unique and says, ah, stereo. Got it. Now, this is interesting. It wants to do figure eight for vocal duets at the same time, which is very, that's valid, except the Soyuz 017 tube is a fixed cardioid mic. It cannot go to figure eight. You can buy a figure eight capsule for it, but it's not. Mistake number, I don't know. You just got to figure it out. You got to figure eight it out. Interesting ideas, but it can't, it's not going to replace my job anytime soon. Think. Give it like six months or so. <laughs> <laughs> that that is interesting, though. It is a, a very cool and I feel like I don't know unique way to utilize ChatGPT. Mm-hmm. I mean, it kind of it gets me thinking about different ways to use stuff. Because I mean, I'm looking over here. I have, I have so many microphones, dude. Not enough, though. I think there's enough. I don't. Oh, did you look back here? There's two more. I just got three more. Well, the one I've already, I've had, but the two yeah. EVs or those, those are buyers. <laughs> <laughs> they aesthetically look Buyer good. dynamic, the M88, M160. So I haven't played with them yet. They look cool. Mm -hmm. I'm actually interested to try those out. Are they set up for an acoustic? Right they now? were. I, re I recorded, um, there was a band in here yesterday and I recorded, they came back in for overdubs and we were using the one that's set up there. Mm -hmm. So I just put them alongside just to see. I didn't get the chance to go back and listen to them or yeah. anything yet, but just wanted to see, pop them up on something, make sure they work, and they do. This is good. Good news when it works. So, yeah, so there's a video coming about that at some point. But mm -hmm. Microphones on microphones. I Mics on mics on mics. They're fun. They're different. You get so many different flavors. Yeah. But listen, Jeremy, you can't. I, I'm catching a whiff of feeling bad about how many mics you have. It's a problem. And you can't. You can't. Think about all these guitar players out here with, you know, closets of pedals and <laughs> closets of guitars. It's the same idea. They're all tools. One of my buddies carries around buckets of pedal. Like, he'll bring a pedal board, and then he brings buckets. <laughs> I've worked with him before. Yeah. yeah. Came in with, but how useful was it? It was awesome. It's great. You have so many <laughs> options, and new ideas can stem from that. I guess everybody's got their... Do you know Collection. a single professional carpenter that only has one toolbox? No. The answer Jesus is no. Christ. Well, <laughs> toolbox didn't exist yet. <laughs> True. Mm -hmm. As far as we know, I don't know. Maybe they did. I don't know. I haven't studied the history of toolboxes. <laughs> I, uh, we need Sora to create us a visual prompt of what, <laughs> what toolbox did Jesus use? <laughs> can we is there a trial can we do that i think there is a trial especially you're subscribed to chat gpt right <laughs> yeah i think you get it nah i believe so what noise was that that i just made <laughs> an excitement noise can i just log in i believe so don't show this no way i had no idea i already what told everybody your password so it's fine dang it the cute kitten's no. password see i'm in chat gpt um, maybe ask it if you can utilize Sora. Ask ChatGPT. Yeah. Hey, do I get Sora? Yeah. It should know, right? I guess. Subscription. I thought something you? was screwed up. I didn't realize that it was cut in half. I was like, what's going on with your keyboard? No, I'm sorry. You don't get Sora. <laughs> I'm a text-based AI. Yeah, I know. No, it says Sora is a character from Ke Kingdom Hearts, which, oh. by the way, great game well, series. Well, it doesn't know Sora exists, does it? Because it stops. It's an, its knowledge base stops. Oh, you're right. You're right. Maybe this is a question for Google. <laughs> Hi. Here's the question. Okay. Sora model not available yet. Uh, not to the public. But also I really how, didn't answer the question. Is, that's from February, though. So I wonder if it is open to the public yet. Nobody here can answer your question. <laughs> All right. So does it the Sora say what it's the tech? I mean, the things they're using to describe are like in the future. Like we are aiming for yeah. System leads. Yeah, I don't see anything here. Pricing. Oh, that's just the API, though. I wonder if it's included, though. 
I mean, it's they're delineating like GPTs and how much those cost. Mm-hmm. So maybe Sora is not included. Maybe huh. they just haven't released any. Maybe it will never be re- released to the public. Maybe it might. They might charge a premium and have just uh, bigger organizations using it. I can't imagine the amount of processing power that would take. Like what that would cost them. Probably a lot. Yeah, I mean, jeez. Yeah. How many tokens does it take to just get, like, information that I just tried to get, let alone, like, let's create. Somebody asked for something in 120 FPS. Like, yeah, that's a whole lot of information. Yeah. Well, Well, I mean, uh, Microsoft just bought billions of dollars worth of NVIDIA AI cards. So maybe. Billions? Billions. That's a lot of cards. A lot of lot of doll hairs. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Not this is not financial advice, but maybe get a get a stake in NVIDIA if you can afford it. Ooh. Things are only growing. A few years ago, I believe it was four hundred a share, and I think it's over eight hundred now. Wow. Yeah. I might be totally wrong. I don't not financial advice. I'm not a I'm not a smart financial investor, but don't sue him. Yeah, yeah. Sue him. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last time I stick my neck out for you. <laughs> Should we move on to Rex? Let's do it. Is this a good time to wind it down? I think so. I think this has been a a good AI written podcast. AI, AI generated. <laughs> AI. So I have one. This actually came from like, you saw this when you walked in, all the new books that I have. Yeah. One of those is like the most underrated records of like X time to X time. I don't remember. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. I got some cool stuff, but this band, I know nothing about this band. So I'm hoping they didn't do something like terrible crash a bus full of kittens or something. But like it's super raw Mm -hmm. and it was really good. And I could, I could hear so many like things that came after it i could hear that in this but i did not know about this band maybe maybe everybody knows there's water down i've never heard of them um i'm trying to find the record name this is one uh all riot 2006 all riot that was from 06 yeah that's a cool sound from ahead of their time yeah That's a girthy sound for being. I mean, it has like, you could hear like, uh, there was like, what was around back then? You definitely had like Under Oath. You had like had heavy bands. And stuff, yeah. This feels like it's pushing things a little more modern. And even the recording techniques were interesting to listen to. It's a cool, it's a cool listen. It's a vibe for sure. Yeah. I wouldn't have known about how to not crack that book open. So water down, all riot. Water down, all riot. Oh man, I love YouTube Music, but please, please get your your search functions and stuff. Just yeah. tighten it up a little bit. Come on, yeah. YouTube, you've got the resources. It's I'm so close for you guys. It's so close. So close. If you can make it easier to view like album releases by release date mm-hmm. instead of going to playlists, and when I hit back, please don't take me back to my homepage. Go back to the search results. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've done it three times in a row now because I can't. There's artist. There we go. If they could figure out the navigation. Um, I think it's this song. So my record rec is Normandy, uh, but with a U in it. So it's spelled like the place, but a U instead of an A for Normandy. But um, I, I started playing with a, a new to me group uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we did a, a show with these fine folks from Normandy. And the, it was the first time I'd ever heard them. And their live show is a bop. It is a good time. It's impossible to just like stand still and watch, which for better or for worse, that's definitely me at a show. It's like I'm I'm taking everything in so much that I'm like I'm the guy standing there just watching intently. Uh, But this band, they've got the whole like uh, they're all in ears. It's a it's a smaller like local band you know trying to trying to make waves and everything but they do pro moves i think that was the show that i played 
that one right there. Yeah. But they have, um, they've got the whole, like, I believe they're running Ableton, but they have the whole track set up um, for like their big sub drops and everything and some of the synth tracks. But then they also have it synced up to their fog machines and their whole light rig. Oh, that yeah. They travel they're with. doing Ableton right. Yeah, they're doing okay. it right. They're doing it to the nines. Um, their stuff feels great. But their music is pretty cool. It's um, a little bit of a new take on like incorporating some of the big festival EDM styled concepts. Okay. And incorporating that with like breakdowns. And there are some like. You're speaking my language. Yeah, there's some hip hop stylistic screaming rap stuff, but then also like soaring vocal lines that go with it. Ooh. Okay. And they're super tight live, which is always great to see when when you have more technical type of bands play, especially when they're not huge touring acts. It's you know, it's up in the air sometimes. Are they gonna represent their albums mm -hmm. um in a in a very tight manner? And they do. So good guys, cool creative music, listening through their songs and albums, there's a lot of really cool production ideas and incorporating those EDM type tracks and sounds so i'm gonna go check them out yeah that's awesome. normandy all right well normandy normandy i was curious with a band like that did they have like a sound guy that went with them not for this show like that kind of like hyper precise like you'd want to make sure your kick drum sounds right new i feel like that'd be hard going place to place i would i would imagine so yeah um I didn't get a, a lot of chance to kind of sit down and chat with them, but those are some of the questions I was kind of wondering. I also, I believe the drummer has all of them going through an interface and then they're also sending it back out to front of house. Okay. Um, so everybody has themselves in their ears as well, which That's in my awesome. mind is the perfect setup. I, I love working. I wonder if they're them. just using splits. So front of house gets their own line and then they're just using it for their own ears. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a slick way to do an in-ear rig where no front of house engineer is going to get mad at you. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, yeah. you're, they're, not they're getting what they want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. So, well, Jeremy, what, what should they leave? A robot? That only, that I was going to say the same thing. I wasn't going to, I like it when you suggest the emoji, but I wasn't going to steal it from you. Know you know what would be fitting? Let's ask ChatGPT. Oh, let's. ChatGPT. What emoji should our audience <laughs> leave in the chat? Chast. <laughs> you might want to use a friendly wave hand emoji. Nah. Nah, robot. Robot. Mm-hmm. Drop a robot if you stuck this long. Um, if you haven't. <laughs> I told it boo and it said, okay, how about a ghost? <laughs> That's pretty fitting. The ghost is pretty fitting for Phantom Power Hour, but. All right. You com got combine the them all. Ghost, robot, waving hand. <laughs> ghost, robot, waving hand. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of them. <laughs> if, you're, if you're. Yeah. I, never mind. I don't know. <laughs> we made it to the end my brain's shutting down uh cheers, cheers indeed getting that brain some more juice bye bye is it off yet <laughs> <laughs> it didn't overheat and it went for an hour mm.